But the other player did not choose X. Just by the look one, they just didn't choose X. Does that make sense with the word right there? Not X. Then, choose E. Now, on the other hand, if, if in this period, if I did not choose C, but the other player stayed on X, that is, stayed on the equilibrium, but I hopped on, then I choose A. And then the last one is else we choose B. Did you see how that's written now? We've specified all the possibilities. That is, on the first period, I play C. If everybody's playing C, and you can, can you imagine the other side, don't need to specify it, it's just going to be the flip side of this. Okay? It's a symmetric idea, so it's going to be symmetric. We just, for every time you see an A, you substitute B. Every time you see a C, you substitute X. Every time you see, and so on. Instead of an E, you substitute with a Z, Z except we flip it around. So we're going to see what, so you can imagine what's going to happen here. If I ever hopped off the path, I'm one. I, if I ever hop off the path, I deviate for some reason. Then after that, I'm supposed to play A, and the other player is going to play Z. So what's, can you see where we are up there? Oh, no, not the one. So we're going to be in the upper right-hand corner. Is it is this incredible to play that? If the other player says, I'm playing Z no matter what. What should I play if I'm one? A. So it's a credible thing to say. So you can imagine what the punch is going to be. Okay? And then, if the other player ever messes with me, right, the other player ever messes with me, I say, then I say, I'm playing E. And then the other player, what is what do they have to play if I'm playing E? They're going to play A. B or A. Their A. They're going to play the first call. B. Because that's their best response. Right? And notice that what are they going to get if they get that? Right? They're going to get two. Right? The idea is I'm going to punish you. Right? And by remember, you can look at them around your head. They're both punishments. So you're going to get the two. If you ever mess with me, I'm playing E for sure. And so we can perhaps get back on. Okay? Or at least go. Oh, so here, and then if everything else messes up, right? Instead of moving down the the Y with the six six, which is kind of what our alternative was up there, we're going to move to the threes. So the punishment it's not horrible; it's better than the zeros, right? But it's not great because at the end of the sixes. But this is can you see what the, the punishment strategy is now? If you ever hop off, that is, if you ever go grab that eight. Then you're going to get two next time and three every time after that. And then we want to see is this actually a Nash equilibrium to enforce that kind of function? Otherwise, it's not a credible function. So you see what we're doing here? Okay. So now we need to check to see under all circumstances. Now we have a few more paths to check. Right? We have to check all the paths. Are all of these subgame perfect? Does anybody ever want to deviate from this path? So all we have to do is check it for one because if it works for one, it's going to work for two. It's a symmetric thing. Symmetric thing. So um, let's check first of all the, the, the initial one. Um, we both played CX. Okay. This is what happened previously. T minus one. We both played CX. If I stay on the equilibrium, what do I do? I'm going to play C. C. The other player is playing, continues to play X. And so I get seven. seven, and I get seven forever. This is what I get by following the equilibrium. What did you make the minus one? Oh, what happened last period? Uh, whatever happened. You could put it as this. If it's just C. If C minus CX. If that's what happened last time, what do I do this time? And this says, well, if I play C, that is, I stay on the equilibrium. I'm going to get seven forever. 
But maybe I'm, I'm, I'm so tempted, right? I'm tempted. I can always do better in this one period by hopping off. What, how can I do better by hopping off? Where do I get better? Uh, if you play B. I get the eight, right? I play B. I get the eight this time by playing B. Then I only take it, I only hop off once now I'm saying I want to get back there. Now let's see what happens after that. I popped off. What does the other player do now? Now that I popped off. They go to Y. They're gonna play Z for sure. Oh, they're gonna Z. play Z for okay. sure, right? They play Z, which means what's my best thing to do? I might as well play the I gotta play the A, right? They're playing the Z, right? This is theirs. Hold their equilibrium constant. Hold their strategy constant. C is my play a best response to what their strategy is. The supposed equilibrium strategy. Okay? So, yeah. so I hop off, I get eight, but then I have they're gonna say, hey, if I ever see you hop off, I'm playing Z. This next three. That's what this says, except on the other side. So then I get, well, if they're playing Z, the best I can do is play A, right? So I might as well play A. So I go, and by the way, that's what else it says here. If I hopped off, I should play A. So I'm actually following. But by the way, that is the best response you can see. If they're playing Z, the best I can do is A. So I get delta times two. And then after that time, what are they going to do? They're going to where after that? Then we're currently not playing CX, right? We're playing some. We're playing AZ, which means we're fitting into this part. Except for player two instead of B, we call it W. So, but it says anytime after that, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to play B. Now I can double check. They're playing W because they were not on CX, we're, we're on AZ. So they're going to play W. What should I do? I should play B, which by the way is. My Nash equilibrium. I mean, my, my, and I get, and then I get that three forever. Because now we're in this path. We're playing B, W every time after. So we're in this path so that we're never going to get off. That's the piece. So, so here I'm playing square. This is two periods down. Um. So here, this is where I play A, and here is where I'm playing B again, B forever. And the question is, is that the Nash equilibrium in that one, unfortunately, does not have a nice, clean way to cancel out. Sure. Okay. You have to solve that. But this is the condition of the Nash equilibrium. Okay. That is, I don't want to ever get off that Nash equilibrium if CX was previously played. I want to, if if this holds, this is sorry, this is the constraint in order for this to hold as a Nash equilibrium. But then what's the next thing we need to check? We need to check. Hey, um, let's check these other paths. So the next path is right here, we have to check these other paths. Are these actually Nash equilibrium? So the next path is if C nice. So I did choose C, but 2 did not choose X. And so if I follow the Nash equilibrium, what should I do? I should choose E, e which means I get today, and what are they going to do if I'm choosing E, by the way? Right, let's look around the other side. The. They're going to choose the V. So I get 5 today. Right? I get 5 today. And then what do I get after that? Since we've now played EV. Now we're going to move play. to BW every time after that. Okay? So in BW, what do I get? I get. And then I'm sorry, I have to do that. Delta 3, but then I get that forever. This is if I stay on. This means I got the E here, and then I got the P every time after. Now, can I possibly deviate from that? 
is the question. Is there any time I can properly do you? So the place to look is in the first period. Can I ever get off the better by saying, you know, the other player is playing B. I'm keeping their strategy constant. Can I ever do better than playing E against B? No. Right? If I did B instead, if I did B instead, I would get the four. And then I mean, and then I still get, so let's just say I'm playing B. I get that's the best next best thing I can do. And then what would happen after I play that B? What do I get after that? Um, they understand on the equilibrium. I hopped off on that one time. But so they get... saw that I played B when I wasn't supposed to. I mean, I'm not many of these paths right here because I played B here. So I'm in this path. So you have beta times so by. So I get delta. Delta times by. So what do we notice about that? Minus delta. <laughs> That's not going to be any better. So I might as well stay in the equilibrium path. So that one's checked off. I don't even need to solve for delta. That's true for all values of delta. Okay. What's the next one that I need to check? If I was the one that affected, I'm the one that affected. What am I supposed to do according to this? I'm supposed to go ahead and take my medicine and play no way. Sorry, play A. So if I play A, what do I get? Um, I get the two. Two. Right? And then after I play that two, what am I going to get after that? I can get the three every time three. I play that. Right? So I get the A and then the B forever. And then you can say, well, is there anything I can do better? The other player is playing um, Z for sure. Remember, the equilibrium, they're playing Z. Can I do better, any better than playing A if they're playing Z? No. Now, the best I can do, I can try to play B. If I play B, I get one. But then after I play B, now we're on the this path here. So the best thing for me to do is continue playing B. And so does it matter what delta is? Those two just cancel out. Two is always greater than one. So this always checks out. Right? So under that punishment path, I might as well continue following the strategy. Okay, so I'm checking, in some sense, I'm checking that subgame. If I ever went down this path, which doesn't happen to you, but if I ever went down that path, I don't have any incentive to get off. Okay? And then finally, uh, it's the last one. The else. If else. So right now I'm playing B. The other player is also playing W. Right? They're playing W. What do I get if I stay on the path? Three. And what do I get tomorrow? Three again. So I'm three more on this delta forever. If I ever flip off, if I ever get off the path, right? What's the best I can do? The other player's playing W. What's the best I can do? I can take that E, that's the next best one. Right? So I play E, I get two to A, and then what do I get after that? I get the three again. Right? I get that three again. And you can see I can I can split that up. I can say this is three plus delta three or minus delta, like that. And so you can see again it just cuts off every subgame. It is an incredible strategy. Right? If we ever popped off, you still want to follow this strategy. Which means, by the way, if the only real question is if we ever got off this path. So the only ones that's right, this didn't, none of these things count on delta. None of them matter to delta. The only one that depends on delta is this one. So we actually have to solve the delta for it. This is the only constraining part. If this holds, then everything else holds. And so this is, in fact, so this is the way we demonstrate subgame perfect match equilibrium. We didn't just check to see if that this deviation nobody wants to get off. We checked that this. You can think about these as punishments, right? If you ever get off, I'm going to make you take the two. If you ever get off the seven and get the eight, I'm going to make you take the two and get the three every time after. This is what the punishment is. It's not getting the zero forever after. It's better than nothing. But if we ever get off two, if we ever get off the seven, you have to take the two and then the three every time after that. And it turns out that that is a, what we were checking. That is a credible punishment, to say so. That is a 
credible strategy. And notice why it's a credible strategy. It's a credible strategy because every one of those that we're moving between are Nash equilibrium. So it makes it relatively easy to check. Now, sometimes you're going to check for each of those when they have a game like this where it's going to do this and then do that. Like go to, go to the corners. The corners won't actually be Nash equilibrium. And so it's not going to be clear that, you know, we're not going to get 3 greater than 2 when we get some version of delta, some other delta version. So you have to check to see under what circumstances is it credible to do this much. This says, well, under the following circumstances, the delta is greater than some number. So is the only reason that we went through and checked all of the subgames was because we couldn't solve that first one very easily? Or would no, we need we, we to check it for all of them. We, we still actually need to find out what the delta would be for here. Okay. I don't know if I could do that. Delta that. Solves this. I guess you could say that. If you didn't want to go through that. But we actually, in order to show it to something in perfect national equilibrium, I need to show it in every sub game. But these, these are all the possible sub games. And the reason we did the other one first is because there was really only two sub games, right? The Grim Trigger is pretty easy. Here's the equilibrium, and here's what happens if we ever get off. And it's credible. Well, we find you, you can check to see what it's credible. The reason it's credible is because you revert to the worst Nash equilibrium. Well, it's worse. The 6, 6, and 7, 7, 7. Here, it wasn't so clear. I wanted to go through this to show you. Here's this more complicated punishment strategy. It's more complicated. Under what circumstances is the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? And I wanted us to walk through. We actually have to check every subgame to see if we're ever in this subgame right here. Do, do both players want to follow what is prescribed for them to do according to the step to the equilibrium? And this said, what we did is we checked it, and it says yes. Nobody wanted to get off. They wanted to follow the equilibrium strategy. So that's something that we didn't emphasize as much, right, on Thursday when we said let's just check it. We were just essentially we were checking the first one without checking the second one. But I wanted to emphasize that you might that to fully characterize, to demonstrate that it's an Ash equilibrium, you don't just say it's an Ash equilibrium, you say you show it. And here, that's what we did. This is the best I could possibly do if I didn't choose it. That's the best I can do. It's working. So that's, this is um, optimal. Following this, the, in some sense, what we're doing is following the equilibrium punishment is optimal. That's what we're finding. Nobody wants to hop off. So what we've done is we derive it for every sum game. Okay. And that's one of the main points I want to make sure we have. You have to check not only the initial deviation, but you have to check to see that the punishment is optimal as well. That the person, the other player who's punishing you for getting off, do they actually want to punish you? And this says, Yes, because if you say, I'm going to punish you, but it's not in your interest to punish them, then what will they say? They'll say, oh, you're not going to punish me. So it can't be a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Think about this one in terms of, um, you can think about this in terms of dating again, or thinking in terms of your kids. I'm going to take the following thing away from you. But you know you want to get that to me. Why would you take, you know, do I really think that you're going to follow through on that punishment when you really want to get it to me? Something like that. Or um, it was more extreme when we were doing the breakup. It was a breakup. Break but uh, suppose somebody is unfaithful. Would you never, ever, ever take them back? That's what we're doing here, right? It's an infinitely repeated game. The Grim Trigger says you'll never take them back. Is that really optimal? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, it depends, right? Depends on what the payoffs are. Depends on what your payoffs are. You have to know whether the person would ever take you back or not to know. But that, and the problem this is I know this goes kind of, I don't know if this is the anti or pro gospel. But then it goes, um, it doesn't line up very well. <laughs> but the idea is if you're trying to use the punishment to deter infection, then it has to be a credible punishment. So, if now, all of us are faithful, because none of us want you. But if we're 
you know, the kind of person that's being held in check by the threat of punishment, then if the punishment's not credible, you're going to go right off. It's the idea. If you're being held in check by the punishment. So like, that's what we're checking here. And even though this looks complicated, in a sense you're saying, how could it really be that you go and say, that? well, it turns out that's what we checked. It is credible to say these things. And they will follow this punishment strategy if they ever end up here, if they ever end up down that subgame. So all we have to really check in this game itself is whether they would get off in the first place to solve for that delta. But you can, you can see a little bit here, it's probably not going to be too hard to sustain. The reason it's not going to be too hard to sustain is because all I'm doing is I'm getting a one period of a plus one. Right? I get a little bit better. And every period after that, I get worse than the sub. A two or a three. Two in the next period and three forever after. I lose five and four every time after that. Unless I don't value the future at all, right? This is not going to be very hard to sustain. The delta is going to be very low. But notice the delta, the delta that was required there was a half. This delta is going to be less than a half. There we are trading off the 8 versus the 6, right? But here we're going to trade off the 8 versus the 2 and the 3 and such. So we're going to, when the punishment is more severe, the delta can be lower. That's one of the other things I wanted to get, us to get. When you make a punishment that's more severe, you they don't have to value the future as much. But that's also what you do, is you say, if somebody, I don't think that they value the future very much, in order to hold them in check, I need to get, make the punishment very severe. You can think about that in terms of kids. Right? Kids do not value the future very much. They care about what's going to happen to them right now. So that's where they tell you, it's like parenting 101, which is, you make consequences immediate. If somebody does something wrong, you don't say, well, you're going to, you know, I'm going to take away some pillows for you in two weeks. Two weeks is never right, for a kid. Right? So, you say, you did this wrong right now, here's the flaws of consequence right away. And that's because they don't value the future. You must give them the punishment, and it must be worse, right, immediately. Because you're actually working through this strategy. What questions do you have?